values and principles are standing off for those in need and fighting for genuine and leveling up in this city is floundering, if not dead. Let's learn from the mistakes of the past. Let's learn, learn from the challenges that we've faced in fighting against the Lib Dems, in fighting against your Tory uh, friends that you sided with on more than one occasion when this city was going to the war. And let's not make the same mistakes. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Maloney. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I'd like to talk for a short while about a fundamental problem that Councillor Simon um, touched on slightly, and that's the whole finance um, arrangements for local government. It's fundamentally flawed, it's clearly not working, it gives government the opportunity to um, call the tune all the time. And let's look back at how the current council tax system came about. It came about as a replacement for the poll tax, but it didn't go back to the old rating system, which uh, I can't remember when that was abolished sometime in the early 80s, I think, where you had the system, if, if you owned a house that was worth 10 times the amount my house was worth, you paid 10 times as much. Yeah, yeah, all right, okay. I'm talking basic principles. Now, if we look, if we look, if we look at the way the current system works now, a Russian oligarch in London with a 20 million pound mansion pays less council tax than the band A, cheapest house in Liverpool. Now clearly that is a ludicrous system. And it's not fair, and it doesn't work. And it's, it's given this Conservative government, who set up this system, just the strings to pull that they want to pull. Now, I, I think, as I'm sure everybody in this chamber agrees, that Liverpool should have a fair settlement. And clearly, we don't have a large business rate uh, that we can draw down on that the likes of the City of London do. And I think we need to make some move towards replacing the current system with a fairer system that will treat citizens of this city and every other citizen of the UK with fairness and taxation should be according to their wealth, not according to arbitrary factors. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Corbett. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Right, let's look at the first <laughs> let's look at the amend, first amendment to the budget, uh, Councillor Kemp and Councillor Makinson. So I worked incredibly hard last night to try and cut this around so we could actually try and support you in this, but I could not make it work. I tried my best. Okay, looking at what you're actually trying to say here, this is an attack. But what you've done is in the middle of that, and I understand that, you know, it's, it's a political theatre in here, budget meeting. But in the middle of that, you put this, this £10,000 in uh, for, to uh, support the independent advisors on the committee. Now, Councillor Brown quite rightly said how important those are. I checked with Democratic Services again today, we can actually do that anyway. I also checked, have we got any flexibility in there to be able to pay some expenses? to independent advisors and committees. Yes, we have. So I think going backwards then, to look at this again, is thinking, why did you actually put this in? So it's, it stands for an attack. Okay, the second bit, and you uh, raised it, Councillor Moni, before, about the whole new system that's needed. And Wendy, sorry, Councillor Simon mentioned that as well, quite rightly. But what you've done again is you come up with a solution <coughs> instead of actually looking at what the possibilities could be. We need a new way of doing this. We need a much better relationship between the national government, the local government, but also at a neighbourhood level. And that was probably what you were trying to get as well. But we've got to get this right. We can't just jump into, I'll tell you what, this is the solution, because it's, it's more complicated than that. If you look at what we've tried to do with this budget, and we have done it with this budget, we've got a really financially resilient budget that sit for us checked over and agrees with that our Section 15 officer has checked over, we stress tested every single option, we've also put in there a whole hopeful way of moving forward 
So not only have we got hope in the system, we've also got realism and we've got pragmatism. And it's all tightly held within the financial rules. I will remind people that a long time ago, I remember, Councillor Kemp will remember this, when the art price treaty state was Councillor Married, our mate Rosie, yeah, used to live on the on the art price treaty state. And um, her partner um, was living in a property there that was so bad they had sewage coming in down the whole of that road, all that street. I went into a mate of mine's house, Valley, I can still remember going upstairs and seeing what looked like black carpet tacked to the roof, sorry, tacked to the ceiling in the upstairs bedroom. They were trying to live downstairs and they had that upstairs. And that was under the Lib Dem administration and Council Kemp, you were chair of housing. So don't start attacking us. We've all done stuff that we, we don't particularly feel we should have done better with, but don't you dare attack us with some of that, because I will go back to the history there. And what happened then? The militant tendency walked into this city, and they wrecked the city. Yes, of course they built houses. Yes, of course they built council houses. But I can tell you what, the stuff that we had to deal with, year on year, decade after decade, because of what they did, that you left as an open door, and they came straight to the middle. And what you've got here is, you've got a strong budget from a strong Labour group that are putting this with hope and realism into the system. And I really encourage you to vote for it. Thank you. Councillor McAllister Bell. Thank you very much. Uh, I agree with Councillor Simon that our officers are the crown jewel of this council. And what they have been is failed by political leadership. We know that from the calorie. We see in the echo headline that said, failed. I would love some of the people who have spoken tonight to read it and understand it in the words of a, another council meeting. Because it matters. We're, we're sitting here and we're talking about politics. It's clear what the Labour group decided that they agreed with it. We can't stand on our record, so we'll attack them. You can't sit there and you can't go on your record. You know, I've got a stat for you. 336 out of 341 that this Labour administration rates for recycling. That's the truth, and that's felt by our communities out there. 336, that's where we rate our council. So, when it comes, and it's not in my way that introducing this isn't right, take a Labour leader, and I will say, they introduced it, and Recycling rates fell by 72%. They said it was a mistake. So, political leadership has failed this city. And you would rather stand here and have the people of Liverpool listen to 12 years ago this, 15 years ago that. You're not a forward division and you're not a forward thinking party. You're distracting. You, here's the reality. You don't want to talk about what I hear over there. So you'd rather talk about what happened 12 years ago. And the people of Liverpool are being let down. So, so the, the people of Liverpool are being let down. Now, what I would say is... I, 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 so, when it comes... Here, here's the best one. Out of the top five councils for recycling rates, four of them are Liberal Democrats, and we only control 26 councils. Let's hope next May it becomes 27, and maybe we can improve that recycling rate as well. The people of Liverpool are being let down, and I hope they're watching, and I hope they see your political tactics tonight, because you're letting them down. That's why we are putting our amendment forward that shows a different way because it's on offer to you. Councillor Nick. Councillor Nick. I'm sitting over here so I, I was in the radio right group on Monday night uh, and we had a discussion. I had no support. I had to think about it. I've talked about it the last couple of days. And we decided, no, it's not for me. I'll sit in the line. With anybody else, I'm here on my own, I'm sitting here on my own. And when we 
explain probably why the main reason is, and I can't comprehend why socialists would want to increase reserves by 10.5 million pounds in the city when they don't have to do it. You do not by law have to do that. Now, 10.1 million pounds out of this budget might seem a lot. But let me just explain something to you. I want to say this. 50 pence increase means a lot to people. But let's just explain what's coming round the corner, what we're already hearing, that some people are well potter in. But let me explain something. What the ordinary man and wife and families are going to be facing under this Tory government over the cuts that they've made. Let me explain it. Day to day, not, not that they're going to get that it's, it's lovely or the, you know, it's something that they just want to go out and buy. Let's just say toilet rolls, an increase of 6.5%. Let's just say a tin of beans, an increase of 13%. No, sorry, 17.6%. <laughs> if you look at frozen chips, an increase of 24.1%. And I could go on and on and on. And then, and then you see, besides what we're doing here, or what's getting past here, not what I'm doing, Saying it's important what Council Gibbons said. But let's just tell you this as well what they're facing. So, this is the cuts that we're making, or they're making. Then, all these families out there who are actually act lucky enough to be in the rented sector in their social housing, guess what? The phone will have fallen in. Going to find another increase of five pounds a week. Five pounds a week. As well as that, they're actually going to find an increase of the day to day living, again, caused by the Saudi government, of what I've just explained to you. In the only cost of living, that's going to go around about, and what I've read, around about another 25 to 27 pounds a week. Now, also they're going to be facing families to get round here, petrol rises, you see it, one pound fifty up. Food, sky high, rent increases. So, when I see all this and then I look at council tax, 2.99, again going up. So it's easy, and let's throw council tax, 2.99. Let's talk about what you just said, the green bins. Pound. A week. Let's just talk about the cuts, what we're facing here, all the going to support, all the going to vote, people are going to vote for, with the social services, <coughs> kids, air services, and everything else. And then, and this is something I still can't get my head around, let's just talk about assets that we've got in the city. We actually own hundreds of millions of pounds worth of assets. And yet, there we are. What are we doing? We're taking it out on the most vulnerable. I've heard it time and time again. The most vulnerable are going to be looked after. They're going to be looked after. Jay, I'd, I'd like to finish off on two things. First of all, Councillor. What's her name? Call the site. Council Lottery. Council Lottery. Actually, actually, at the chief to attack, to attack the 49 that run this city. George, can I ask you to bring me to a private space? Can I have two minutes extension? Thank you. Thanks a lot, mate. So, so let me say this, let me say this, attacked people that built thousands of houses, that attacked people that created a thousand jobs, 
Tap people that don't support us. Councillor, can we close now, please? The last thing is, Councillor Kemp and others have talked about a former mayor of this city. That former mayor of this city was one of the best people leaders I've ever seen in this city. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Why? He was one of the best Councillor Nib. That's you finished, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Mitchell. Councillor Nib. Councillor Nib. Councillor Mitchell. Thank you, my lord. Uh, I've kind of lost a bit of track. No, 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 no this is for you. Or whether we're debating the debate, the main motion, or, or what. I've kind of, kind of got lost. So I just thought I'd say uh, my two pennies. Listen, I do not believe there's a council in this chamber that wants to impose cuts. I don't believe that there's anybody who wants to impose cuts. And when we took, when Labour took the city in 2010, we looked at the reserves. And we made an objective decision to spend the reserves to backfill where it needed to be backfilled. And we can forget about individuals, that's why we kept the city afloat, that's why we did it. The £10 million pounds that are we being forced? You know, the question's been asked, are the commissioners insisting? Is that is that actually happening? Because that's the case, why aren't we being told? Tell us it's being imposed on us. Tell us if it is. Because I'll back you then. Because it is what it is. But we're making an active choice to add that to it. That's our choice. And there isn't a person of whatever political persuasion in this chamber that wants to impose cuts. I've just said that. I know that. But we're making a choice, because what feeds on from that? What is, it, what, what is reserves? It's an insurance policy, isn't it? When something goes wrong, it's like having fire insurance. What's the point in having fire insurance if your buildings burn down around you? And that's what we will be doing by having 10 million pounds unnecessarily. You all know what I'm speaking is the truth. You can shake your heads, but you all know it's the truth. So what does this bring? The most regressive green tax that any of us knows. Come on, this will not raise the money that is said. This will not increase recycling, it will decrease recycling. And it's an added tax on anyone who has a garden or a shrubbery. It's regressive and unnecessary to, to change the way, let's talk about rat infestation and asking the private sector to pay for it. They won't pay for it! We all know they won't pay for it! Because this is not a shock in Amasia, there are some poor landlords out there who don't care about their tenants. We will have more rodent infestation in this city as a result of that shit. That's a fact. What can we do to challenge it? What we should do is not add this £10 million to the reserves. If we do that, we can ameliorate the problems that we've just talked about. I, honest to God, don't want to have to vote against the city budget. Never did it. Don't I have to do it tonight? Because we are imposing taxes on individuals in this city as Councillor Nib has just talked about, at the worst possible time. And we are choosing it, comrades. And I'm using that phrase, advisory. We are choosing to do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Councillor Heron, and then finally, Councillor Fraser Lake. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, mine isn't about the budget. It's actually, as you've guessed, it's no secret because of where I've sat tonight. But I've been in this chamber since 1987 as an officer and now as a councillor. Probably much longer than some of the people in this room were even born there. But I just want to place on record, and I don't want to say this, it isn't an attack, but I'm appalled, sat at the side of the chamber, 
watching behaviour out of people, laughing and giggling when people are allowed freedom of speech and their opinion. And that's what politics is about, democracy. And all I'm seeing is people shaking their heads and giggling and laughing. And I'm just, I'm really uncomfortable with it. And I just wanted to say thank you for the time. Councillor, please have a chat with me after the meeting if you've got a minute. Fraser Lake. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Uh, I think, to be, to be honest, some of the comments that have been made in this chamber tonight have been completely farcical. I'm surprised that the speeches haven't started with once upon a time. I hope the comments that have been made by Councillor Kemp in his amendment, which he references decreasing standards in adults and children's social care. There's many reasons why there's been increases to our numbers of children and young people coming into care. But I'm not for sure members in this chamber that as the cabinet member covering both of these areas, our teams are working incredibly hard to ensure that we're supporting all of our service users in these areas. To comment briefly, within adult services, we're going through a transformation programme at the moment, which will allow us to improve our service offering. We're looking at new and innovative ways of supporting our service users. Some examples of this within the proposals include supporting people by using a digital solution and assistive technology if this is appropriate for them by transferring responsibility to the Clinical Commissioning Group for funding nursing care care packages, by looking to maximise the funding that we receive from our health partners for those who are eligible for continuing care or joint funded care. Our proposals within adults concentrate on both savings as well as areas for growth and to maximise income received from all eligible health partners. With relation to children's services, our options include us looking at our structures, ensuring that we're fully aligned with the rest of the directorate Recognising the reduced requirement for historical teacher pensions and factoring these matters into our proposals. I also want to highlight the fact that our Cabinet on the 21st of January this year, we also approved the commissioning of a sector-led improvement partner to carry out a children's social care practice quality assessment and the procurement of an external consultancy to carry out a financial diagnostic so we can take a deeper look at where areas need improvement. Significant work on demand management in children's social care is being carried out within the council, but there's obviously, there's always more to be done. The work that will be carried out and is going on is crucial, and there's great value in using the independent organisation I've referenced here, who've got direct experience of this work in other areas, who can benchmark, share learning and experiences from areas where evidence-based, successful strategies have been identified and that we can implement within the council, and that's a key part of our improvement journey. Across the board, the teams and I are aware of our responsibilities. Our work includes finding innovative and transformative solutions to problems that present themselves. We actively work to promote people's independence, allowing people to stay at home and retain their dignity rather than institutionalisation. Councillor can refer to the fact that we utilise the private sector for some of our services. I think everyone needs to understand and recognise that bringing services in-house does not in itself provide a solution. I don't believe in insourcing for insourcing's sake. There are also necessities to utilise in the private sector, as, as you mentioned. Given the budgetary constraints that we have, it wouldn't be fiscally responsible to try and insource everything. Our teams are in continuous dialogue with our Commission services regarding quality assessments and strengthening our service offering. Councillor Nathanson and Councillor Klein, you made comments you asked at the Finance and Resources Select Committee last week. As those questions were answered at the time, I mean, I'd recommend watching the live stream back but in the interest of a larger audience in the chamber, allow me to provide a, a brief trip down memory lane. The collapse of the Smith Down scheme to help house rough sleepers was a, was a bitterly disappointing blow to the council, and there was frustration the fact that there was a lot of hard work that went in to get that scheme ready, and it fell through at the last minute through no fault of the poor city council. So I'm not having comments made by benches opposite who were ill-informed explaining that this is something that we'd hand it back willingly. As a council, we ask central government to provide us with more time to find a suitable alternative. Government rejected this and took that money back. Let me be very clear, we didn't give that money back. We were told to hand that money back. Despite that setback though, the good news is we found other ways to create that capacity that we need. By working with YMCA and RSLs, 160 beds are being created across the city to help people stay off our streets. Rough sleepers aren't going to be ignored in Liverpool. We housed approximately 2,200 people through the Everyone In scheme throughout the pandemic and kept that going year after that was ended by government. We're doing all that we can to ensure that anyone who needs support gets it and we're a city that has always cared and we always will. 
Our teams are working incredibly hard to ensure that Alex and Rachel are here to get to the road. I'm the last part now, Lord, no, thank you. Our teams are working incredibly hard to ensure we get the right outcomes across the board for children, young people, their families, and adults across the city. So I just want to say a huge thank you to our colleagues across adults, children, and public health and our health partners for all that they've done and continue to do to ensure that our residents' safety and care remains at the heart of everything we do and we'll continue to build on this way. Thank you. Can I invite the Mayor or Deputy Mayor to respond and conclude debate in relation to the First Amendment through the right of reply as mover of the main budget recommendation? Fraser Lake. 
Pastor Val, McIntyre, yes. Amelia, yes. Mitchell, yes. Maloney, yes. Morton, Mumby, yes. Murray, okay. Nicholas, okay. O'Brien, okay. O'Byrne, okay. Parsons, Pitches, okay. Prince, yes. Kadir, okay. Radford, Roberts, okay. Robertson Collins, Robinson, okay. Rothery, okay. Shortle, okay. Simich, okay. Simon, okay. Small, okay. Smeader, okay. Smith, okay. Story, <coughs> Sun, okay. Thomas, okay. Thompson, okay. Tulin, Tommy, Walker, okay. Walton, Wood, okay. Woodhouse. So the result of that vote was 10 for 61 against and three abstentions, so the amendment falls. Can I advise that the, the second amendment has been received from Councillor Tom Crone, which is attached as Appendix C on the note. Confirmation has also been received that the second amendment is seconded by Councillor. Um, all three of my colleagues would like to second the amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I just, I would like to start by, shall I start right here? Yeah, I'd like to uh, start by thanking all the council officers who've worked on this budget. I know that each year uh, the pressure on, on the council and every single department it's getting more and more severe, and to add to that, two years of responding to a pandemic and uh, you know, the, the losses that that has caused. This must have been one of the hardest budget setting processes this council has ever been through, so thank you to the staff who've done it. And I also want to give a special thanks to the Labour Group for paying my Green Party colleague tonight a most sincere compliment a politician can, nicking all our ideas. <laughs> So, you have since the last uh, budget meeting scrapped the Wasteful City magazine, and you've also this year had the headline pledge of saving £200,000 from a senior management review. Two items that both appeared almost verbatim in last year's Green Party budget amendment. And I also understand that work is underway reviewing highway spending to make sure that it's more in line with our net zero ambitions. This sounds strikingly like our active travel fund, which was a big feature of last year's Green Party budget amendment. So I'm glad you do adopt many of our ideas, and I thank you again for that. But in the past, I have been frustrated that it takes so long. You know, waiting a year for our ideas to be implemented is just time wasted. But there are signs that we are speeding up, because just on Monday night, I was asking questions about the, the plans to spend a lot of money improving the profit junction. Something I've had concerns about for several years now since it first emerged. And I, and I raised some issues about it on Monday night. And less than 24 hours later, there was a press release which was published by the BBC and others that the project is going to be reviewed to consider 
it's active travel and um, sustainable transportation and it's something that addresses my concerns. So thank you for speaking about that process. Now we are flattered, but we hope you will save even more time by just voting through our budget amendment tonight, rather than waiting a little while and then quietly adopting our suggestions uh, at some point in the future. Because we do not have any more time to delay when it comes to tackling the climate emergency. The latest IPCC report into the impacts of climate change was released on Monday, and it makes absolutely clear the time for delay has passed. The report makes the grim reading. It is described by the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres as an atlas of human suffering and a damning indictment of failed climate leadership. Let's not make tonight another example of failed climate leadership. Let's agree to revise some of our future plans and show that this council is moving away from polluting carbon intensive industries and choosing to use unlimited resources in a way that sets us on the path to net zero. I do now believe that there are many in the seats opposite who genuinely get the climate emergency and, and, and people on the opposite seats who do want to go further. I do acknowledge that there is a 1.6 million in the capital programme for decarbonising the estate. These are steps in the right direction, but we do need to be taking bigger steps and moving much, much quicker. So I'm appealing to this council to take some pr a practical decision today. Some of the things I remember was quite simple really, it's just reassessing three elements of the capital strategy to create finance for investing in zero carbon projects. This would send a huge message that Liverpool is changing course and is going to start delivering on its pledge of nearly three years ago to start the journey towards net zero. So voting against this amendment will be voting for business as usual for more carbon emissions and pollution in Liverpool. And the vote suggests that the declaration of a climate emergency was a political stunt designed to get positive headlines. I would like to make a note on the garden waste element of our, um, of our amendment as well. We do acknowledge the difficulty in finding revenue savings and the pressure this council is under. But here are three reasons why we have to reverse that decision. First of all, obviously, it will lead to a reduction in recycling if we start charging for collections. It's also a regressive policy, as far as we can see it was a flat fee for everybody, whatever their income. But also, the entire idea might be ruled out of order within a year anyway, because the government has announced a plan for a national bin service which will make free green waste collections actual legislation. So we might go through all that pain and cause all those problems for our communities, but absolutely no <coughs> So on that note, I'll conclude. I do understand the difficulties facing this council, but our amendment is practical, it's significant, and it could really set us in the right direction. Thank you, all there. Thank you, Councillor Clare. Are there any other speakers on the amendments? No? Mayor or Deputy, would you like to respond? Deputy, please.
political stunts on this side. I promise you that. This is serious. Um, I'm going to take on board exactly what you're saying about the IPCC, sorry, the IPPC, about the, you know, t the time for delays is past. We really have to listen to our kids in the city and also the kids across the country and young people internationally who are saying enough is enough. Please don't think though, that because we're not going to agree with this, that we're not agreeing with the, with the sentiment behind it. We're already reviewing all of these coming through. We really are. If you look at what the, the Mayor has done in terms of the triple lock, it, and that isn't a political stunt either, because as I go through every single report that I need to sign off and agree with, in there is the triple lock, so it's people, planet, and equality, and the three go together, as, as all of you on the, on the green side know well. So we are looking at everything that moves, we are looking very seriously at the cruise line return. We're looking at all everything that, that comes to our capital strategy as well. We're looking at the highways. We're looking at active travel. We had a really good uh, discussion uh, a few weeks ago on the Anfield High Street on Brett Road, and we could actually look at that in a completely different way. We're all signed up to the carbon, carbon literacy training that we did, which was just fascinating. I loved it. So there's a, an awful lot where we actually agree. But what I can't do is take this at the moment. It came in just gone midday today which I know that you've been stitching together as quickly as you possibly can, I understand that. But also in there, you've got um, at the bottom about the, the revenue savings could be made in other areas. In terms of the cutting of the use of the paper, we are, we are doing that as we say. So what we're doing is over the next 12 months, we're going to bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. But we have to make sure that, for example, in this chamber, we haven't even got proper IT systems here to get everybody online. We, we need to look at everything that moves. How do we do select committees on that? We need a little bit of time to do that, not long, a little bit of time to do that. Um, the cost of the Chief Exec's office, um, the Mayor's office, and the overall savings are 250. The, the Mayor on Neighbourhood Fund actually, um, if we use it right, it makes a massive difference on the ground because it's at a very, very low cost. Um, and I know that in, in Everton we've actually used it um, for the CCTV, the mobile CCTV. Council and myself have been doing that. We've picked out at least three places. We've got three up already. We've got another three to go. And we're gonna, if we can get those five tickets, we will don't repeat that, but we will do. Um, so we're on board with what you're saying. You agree with us, we agree with you. I, we can't pass this because we're doing it in the right stages at the right time to move it forward. All of this is being reviewed. But thank you so much for putting that putting that forward. Thank you. We will now move to the vote. Voting is for the second amendment by Councillor Tom Hill. Lord Mayor, can't vote will now be conducted on the second amendment. Councillor Banks, Barrington, Lila Bennett, Ruth Bennett, Berry, Brandt, Chris Brown, Lawrence Brown, Calvert, Cardwell, Clark, Klein, Coleman, Conception, Connor, Corbett, Crofts, Crow, Cummings, Delahunty Keogh, Harry Doyle, 